Picking the right RAM speed is always a difficult question for most creators. And in this video, we're gonna look at Premiere Pro and of course, rendering some videos so that we can actually see the idea behind reality versus what we may think is happening. Welcome back to another video. My name is Nikos. Today we are looking at the question behind RAM speeds for creators when they're trying to figure out what should I actually buy because this stuff gets expensive when uh, you're looking at something like a kit, like the Neo here, the Trident Z Neo by G Skill, and you're going up to 128 gigabytes. Is 3200 good? Is 3600 what you really need? Can you go to 3800? What occurs? And the idea here is, well, let's focus on what we can overclock. So I'm gonna be overclocking this kit here, 64 gigabytes, because it's easier to overclock 64 gigs, two sticks versus uh, four sticks. And I will be making more videos on the four sticks, 128 gigabytes, and I will be doing more videos on 6K as that was asked. But in this video, I'm gonna be focusing on two different videos with 64 gigabytes and go through the whole step-by-step -step approach of overclocking and seeing the direct results so you can put a more, uh, more clear perspective in your mind of what to expect and can, now better uh, attain a better working budget for yourself. For the purpose of replication and easier testing and people can more identify with this, the average user, uh, one timeline will be more graphics intensive, not very long. It's gonna be around 10 minutes and 46 seconds. The other one is gonna be more CPU intensive and this is gonna run around 10 minutes and 28 seconds. So again, nothing super complicated, just something that we would put together so we can get a video off really quick. Now to get a baseline of what the GPU is doing, I did overclock it for each test run and I did both sets. So we do see that there is a clear baseline here of an increase of speed whenever we are using the GPU in overclock mode, both in the CPU intensive and the GPU intensive. So we are seeing the pattern here play out. It is good to see. And we now know, okay, moving forward that that will have an effect uh, overall in both cases. When I remove the overclock of the GPU and I just look at the baselines here, we do have the, uh, the non-XMP profile at 2666. There is a big difference in both cases. And this is where you really need to make sure that you turn on that XMP. If you're not turning on that XMP, you are just wasting the resources of any chipset. So please, please, please. And I get this question a lot. Hey, um, my RAM is reading this. Go into your BIOS and you gotta enable the setting in order to do this, okay? Simple, very simple. Now, when you do turn it on, it's gonna go to its basic profile. In the case of my chipset, it was at 3600 CL18. I did underclock it and we went to 3200 CL16 here. So when we're comparing the 3200 CL16 that you can pick up versus the 3600 CL18, this is standard that we see, we do notice that in the CPU intensive, there isn't a big difference, and same goes for the graphics intensive timelines here. When we change the CL to 16 on the 3600, we again see a little bit of a change, but not that big. Where do we see a big bump? It's at that 3800 CL18. So this speed does uh, improve with the CPU intensive, where in the GPU intensive, it does not. What is actually occurring here? Well, you're directly just moving to do that task in the CPU to the RAM, where the GPU is sending it through the RAM to the GPU and back. So, and the, the GPU is actually doing a lot of the work and it has its RAM. So if you're looking at more graphic intensive stuff with your timelines, then yeah, the, the better the card, the faster it's gonna go, especially when it has more RAM. This is why a lot of people recommend over 10 gigabytes. You wanna be around that 10 to 12 gigabyte range as a minimum for big timelines that have a lot of graphic intensive work on them. You have to also put in perspective of how much usage you're going to be doing with this and what is the overall need. I have a, I ended up going with a 3060 Ti and that one only has eight gigabytes on that card. The idea here was there was no stock or else I would have gotten something that was a little bit better. Now there's a 3070 Ti, I think, 3080 Ti. I haven't looked at the newest releases yet, but I've heard of the 3080 Ti and I've heard it overheats and stuff like that. So you gotta be careful on all this aspect of what card you're gonna be buying for the next set of years they're gonna be using it. At the same time, I would really, I'm gonna be making videos on this, but I would really recommend uh, if you don't need a card yet, 
take a pause. Just take a pause. Stock levels are still coming back. Prices are starting to come down. Um, everything is starting to get a little bit better, better into that place of normality that may or may not come by Black Friday. And then we got to look at the whole picture and ask ourselves, well, what's the new stuff that's coming out? Because I've heard good things. And the question is, well, if you don't need it yet, maybe you should wait. If you do need it, then think about the card that's going to be able to resell the quickest so you can upgrade quick. Now, just taking a look more closer here at the 4K render with the CPU intensive uh, factor in there. So the timeline dictates more need of the CPU, which means that the RAM will get a good increase with the 3800 uh, CL18. On the other hand, you're looking at it and you're saying, well, is this five seconds really that much of a game changer? And at the same time, is most of your content going to be CPU intensive or is it going to be GPU intensive? We have to remember that the GPU intensive, we have to remember that the graphics card has been doing a lot of work in recent changes that has been happening over the last couple of years with Adobe Pro and all the Adobe Suite. So you have the graphics accelerator in there and it's taking on a lot of these heavy tasks that the CPU is doing. It's now the GPU doing it. And you gotta ask yourself, where is your money better spent? or rather invested. Now, when you jump into Newegg and you start to look at all the different kits here and the different combos, uh, it can become a cluster. First things first, you gotta look at the 64 versus 128 gigabytes. What is it you really need? Most people will be good with 64 gigabytes, but 128 is a good sweet spot for having all your programs open and doing your thing. I have a link below on the video on 64 versus uh, 128, so check that out. Since our testing was based on 64 gigabytes, what we're uh, gonna do is uh, head over to the side here and look at 32 gigabytes per module. I'm just gonna click apply here. And now we start to see some pricing. Now these are our USD pricing. And we can see that the, uh, the cost that is gonna be attributed to everything that we select is gonna be based on certain features. So the first thing you want to do is uh, hit up the compare. This is two times 32. Um, they do have a 128 gigabyte kit here and um, these would be similar. So I'm just gonna compare these two right now. And when I bring up the comparisons, I have the RGB and the Neo. These are two different uh, uh, makes. There are some differences in them. I will go into them in another video. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to look at the speeds. And uh, we do have the 3600 C18 uh, in both the Neo and the RGB. And then, of course, I found a 3600 in the Neo at C16. And then there is a 3200 at C14. So we're looking at this and we're saying to ourselves, well, uh, there was a 16, but the 14 is awesome. And there's also 4000 C18, which is amazing at this price point. Let's look at it in perspective now. I currently have the 36 C18. This is what was available when I went to purchase. I bought the kits for 128 gigabytes. So we're going to be doubling this up. Now, at 349, I could go with this one or I could go with the RGB. Now, I want to stick with Neo just because of everything I read. However, if you go with one or the other, you won't find that big difference. I think you're going to uh, find some heating and uh, heating issues more with the RGB and, of course, the um, uh, the actual LED, some issues with the RGB. Um, it's not for everybody, and it's based on boards, and I, I just found so many different things on it. It was just kind of like the Neo just was more positive for me. However, I've talked to people with RGB now, and they're just kind of like, I didn't have those issues, so maybe it was a hit or miss, or maybe at the time. I don't know, but I just stuck with Neo. So either way, I, if I found RGB cheaper, I would go for the RGB. Just set that right there. Uh, it was just I found Neo. At the same time, if I'm comparing these at 319, I am saving some money there. Now, when I look at the 3600C16, this is like in demand. So the price is higher. At the same time, people have told me that this is easier to overclock after you know people have bought this 3200 at C14. However, this is quicker than the test I did at 3200C16. So we will find some change negligible at that, but we will find some change there. Where we will see a difference though, because we did see the 3800 as a difference in the uh, GPU intensive uh, video, the 4000 here. And at 339, this is a great price. So you're looking at all these different prices now and you're saying, well, what would be better? And at the end of the day, the question just becomes budget.
that, that's all it is from the example of testing that I conducted now. So if I could go back in time after all the videos I watched and everybody recommending this, this and that, uh, this is pretty much where we're at, budget. So my original was to buy a Crucial and the Crucial I loved, the Crucial was great. And the question became, you know, what about stock? And that's pretty much primarily why I had to return that. I couldn't get another 64 gigabytes and I didn't want to wait for months. In this case though, we're looking at price points that is in line with us just looking at the budget and saying what is best for us money-wise, that's it. Considerations don't have to be in your system. You have to look at your motherboard and you have to ask yourself with your motherboard, with your CPU, will this 4000 actually do the job with the motherboard? Now, uh, what do I mean by this? Your motherboard needs to be able to handle the actual speeds. And in some cases, you, it, it won't handle it even though it says it will. I've seen this in many forums. I've talked to many people who bought a chipset like this and they just couldn't get it to work. The infinity clock would be set to 2000 in this case and, and that's the top for the AMD chip. So you would be running at 4000 C18, which is better than the 3800 C18, which we saw a difference of those several seconds. Now, in the case of my motherboard, I have tested to go up to 4,000 with this kit that I have. The kit won't let me go or the motherboard won't let me go. It's one or the other and I think it's the kit. The idea here would be the die and, you know, the when they actually produce them, how good it is. And this 4000 kit would probably run on my system, but I'd have to do tests. And if it didn't run, I would expect it to do at least 3800. What's my future expectation? Well, when I upgrade the board, if I'm going to be doing upgrades on this and say I, next year I upgrade the board and upgrade the chip, I still have this RAM, it still works, and I can get it to work. Great. Now we're moving forward. Okay, and, and I can still use it. But the question is, will you be doing that for certain kind of thing? And what's your mindset on the idea of spending more money for faster RAM? In this case, we're not. In this case, we're seeing price points that are like, you know, within line. And now, I, do I have to go in and see more of the specifics here and see the timings and how all the timings relate? Yes, these timings do play a big role. And when you're looking at these timings, you have to ask yourself, well, how much faster will something be at 14, 18, 18 versus 16, 20, 22, uh, 22, 22? And at that, we need to look at it in terms of, first, we're gonna take the speed, the 3600 and the 3200, and we're gonna be looking at that first before anything else else and and then go to the, the the set of timings so the idea then looks at well what about voltage and what's the standard volt and how high can you go with these standard volts and we're looking at an overall let's you know jump into more specifics so we can see what is occurring you would then want to do your your reviews go through all that process and say to yourself hey what can i actually do with these set of chips one last thing to remember that uh, and i know people are going to comment this is uh geared towards intel z490 boards and all of these are amd uh, at the end of the day you can use uh ram in even though they're not recommended you can use them in different systems now that being said said, could there be compatibility issues? Yes, I've seen some people say there are compatibility issues, but for the most part, people don't have this issue because RAM is RAM. Now, the idea here would be that anything you're buying with RAM and you're thinking to yourself, hey, um, do I know I'm making the right decision for what I'm doing? always buy something from where you can return it. So if somebody is making a video like this and they say, hey, you can do this, well, guess what? Like maybe it's not possible with your system because it's not going to fit every system. And now you got to put that into perspective. So um, I, I know making these videos, I'm putting my own personal opinion into things. And I'm looking at them saying, well, look at your options here and you can go and you can buy something at 319 and, you know, be off to the races with it in comparison to something like 392. And you can look at the specific models for each one and you can say to yourself, hey, I'm going to go look up this model and then go look at what can I do with overclocking on this model because there are a lot of people testing the, all the, the different models. And then you can look at the price point. In my opinion, I bought this RAM on sale like for like really cheap. It was like a hundred bucks off on each set. So $200 off. And on top of that, if I went with the Crucial, it would have been over a, like close to a thousand bucks versus $700. Now this is Canadian. So think of it in like terms of like $580 versus like 
I don't know, 820 some or whatever. So you're looking at it and you're saying, I did save a pretty penny because it went on sale. And you can find a lot of these on sale. The other side is that if you buy uh, just two sticks and go to 64 gigs and then you want to upgrade later, you can. So you can buy one if you need it right now and then wait for Black Friday to buy the other set and you're good to go because Black Friday, everything was on sale last year. So I'm expecting it to be again this year because it's been like that for the last, like, I don't know how long. Think about it logically. What do you need? What do you want? Look at the pricing. Say to yourself, hey, where can I get something so I can test it on my system to make sure it is doing what I wanted to do and then move forward. What we're going to be doing in future videos is look at 6K, look at 128 gigabytes, show you, you know, the, the capabilities of overclocking. Now, I have an Asus uh, Tough Gaming Pro uh, motherboard X570 and I have a fi 5900X along with um, a 3060 Ti. So my tests are going to be all based on that. I'm going to keep the system until I get everything going and then I'll probably uh, uh, flip the system or um, might be hiring somebody so they might get the system and I might build something new. Uh, the idea here is um, what can we do on the next system and or upgrade something. We got to be thinking about it logically and I wanted to make sure that that message is shared and it's effective uh, in, in the mindset of everybody so they're not stuck in this position where they're wondering, hey, should I be doing X, Y, Z and getting stopped in the decision making process but instead be able to say, here are my X, Y, Zs. This is the logic logical process I should be taking and I'm thinking right. So leave your comment below, leave your question, of course, uh, let me know what system you're using and how does all fit the narrative with what we're talking about? Are you thinking about upgrading? Did you upgrade? What would you do different next time? Because somebody might be reading that comment after watching this video and you might help them out a ton because that's where I got a lot of my information when I was doing my research initially. So building that sense of community is critical. Hit a like, hit a subscribe and watch these two videos, of course.